Welcome to Canby Park West Disc Golf Course, located in Wilmington, Delaware. This is a multi-layout course featuring long and short, both tees and baskets. It's a mostly wooded course with a few open field holes that plays with some elevation over and around a winding creek. I'm Dave Oster, here to take you through the long to long or gold tee to white basket layout, which is a par 61 at 6,487 feet. Stick around to the end and also give you my overall thoughts on the course and my scored ratings. We start off with a pretty nice looking par 4 at 456 feet, throwing from the open into a fairly tight gap into the woods. The basket is straight and a bit to the left, but if you finish your tee shot to the right, it opens up a bit more, then we see the gap the drone is flying through. Either way, you're crossing the creek in your second throw and trying to get it close to start your round off right. Hole 2 is another par 4 at 423 feet. Tight line off the tee, right hand forehand shapes well to get you around the corner. Getting past this fallen tree is a good shot, either over it on the wide line or skip past it on the tighter inside line. Depending on exactly where you land, you want to find one of the few gaps to access the green. Will be road on the right and thick rough on the left mean you'll really want to get through clean. Do that and you'll have a putt on this well guarded green for a birdie. Hole 3 is our first par 3 at 290 feet. The tight initial gap off the tee turns into two tight lines. The left is more open as you approach the basket, but the back door route does shape better for the right hand backhand. Once you get near the green, it slopes away and down with an OP road long, so be wary of that. Hole 4 is one of the straightest holes you'll ever see. Slightly uphill and framed beautifully by two walls of trees, this basket is illuminated by the light at the end of the tunnel. A straight throw is required to reach the light, and your reward? A birdie. Hole 5 is a par 3 at 265 feet. A right hand backhand is the play for this hole. The challenge is getting over this fallen tree and down to the ground on this sloping away green before skipping into the creek that is no more than 15 feet behind the basket. Do that and you should have an easy birdie look. Throwing over that same creek on hole 6 is much easier to do than actually walking across it. At only 272 feet, getting to circle 2 is fairly simple. But getting to circle 1 requires you to land your disc up on top of this ledge and miss the low ceiling. If you do that, you'll likely find your disc next to the basket. Hole 7, you'll be throwing through several tight gaps with a straight to slightly stable disc for the right hand backhand. Get the height correct also to get over these two grounded trees and slow down in time to land on the green, and you'll likely be guarding it too. There are two main gaps on hole 8 that you will want to throw a right hand backhand flex shot through. That is because you want the disc fading away from the creek that runs all along the right side as you approach the basket. A slight mid-range flex, or even powering down on a fairway driver, should get you to the green. Hole 9 is a par 3 at 293 feet. A straight forehand with a fairly hard finish shapes best for this hole, and the line you want to take is a little wider than we see the drone flying here. There's also a lot going on behind the basket that could act as a backstop or give you an obstruct putt, so you can take your chances if you want. Hole 10 is one of the longer par 3's so far on the course, 319 feet. The backhand with a slight left to right fade or a forehand to the wider gap will get you going towards the fairly wide open green. Water along the right side as well, but usually doesn't come into play unless you get a hard kick. 348 feet tee to basket on hole 11 Throwing across the OB road that plays as a river, your first decision comes about 200 feet down the fairway. A few gaps to attempt to push through before you approach the basket out in the open field. There's also a low ceiling and another gap to hit near the basket, making this a very challenging par 3. Throwing across another OB road on hole 12, but this one likely won't come into play as you have quite a lot of room to work with on this 470 foot par 4. Your first throw wants to get near, if not penetrating through, the entrance to the woods. This sets up a forehand or backhand turnover to approach the sloping away green. Hole 13 is one of the most picturesque holes on the course. As you look over the crest of the hill, 
you'll see the valley you'll be throwing into with a winding creek running through. Landing on the right side of the water near the short pin will set you up for an easy second shot, but being a par 4 at only 419 feet and downhill at that, the long pin is certainly reachable if you're willing to attempt to cross the creek a second or third time and avoid all the trees to try to card an eagle. Hole 14 is much more of a two-shot hole. From the tee, you'll likely want to throw a forehand or late flipping backhand to at least get you lined up with the gap, if not all the way out into the field. You can also throw the wider left line that's straighter to access the field, but that makes it a longer hole. It is a hard turn to the right, so you do want to make sure you make it to at least the corner. Either way, you'll likely have pretty much whatever you want to get you the rest of the way slightly uphill to the pin. Hole 15 is a par 3, 331 feet. The main obstacle here is the tree line guarding the green about 270 feet from the tee. Hitting and dropping there will give you a 60-ish footer downhill to the basket with a creek just a few feet behind. From the woods, back out into the field for hole 16. The gap here is tighter than it looks on camera, but if you make it out, you want to be moving to the right. Being uphill, right hand backhand throws will often fade out early and head toward the out of bounds road and 17's fairway. Something understable or a forehand are the safe plays here, but at 331 feet, it's definitely a gettable birdie. Hole 17 is a par 4, and at 524 feet is the longest hole in the course, so far. Off the tee, you just want to keep it out of the road and out of the woods, and ideally in line with this largest gap in the middle of the tree line. From there, you have a very touchy shot throwing through the gap, over the creek and road, and landing on a narrow strip of land that gets narrower the closer you get to the basket. Hole 17 was the longest hole so far. Hole 18 is the longest hole in this course. At par 4, at 534 feet, you have a decision to make. Lay up short of the creek, or go for it to make your approach that much easier. Both options leave you with likely a forehand approach, missing quite a few trees, throwing over a ditch, and under a late low ceiling. Ending your round here with a birdie, will have you leaving with a good feeling regardless of the rest of your round. Overall, I think this course is of average difficulty. If you can hit clean lines through the woods, the distance allows for decently low scoring. There are just enough open holes that I would consider it mixed open and wooded instead of an exclusively wooded course. Athletic field turf tends to be a bit higher quality than your average outdoor carpeting and can be has this for both the long and short tee pads. The winding creeks and use of elevation, both, make this course a picturesque oasis in the middle of the urban Wilmington landscape and a fun, challenging course. The tee signs are also some of the best I've seen, which helps with a little bit of troublesome flow of the course. A few more directional signs and maintained paths between some of the holes would be a great place for improvement. Other than that, I can't say much more on the negative side, but let me know what you think down in the comments. That was Canby Park West Gold Tees to White Baskets. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next hole.